Hello, my name's Oliver Pratton and I'm a politics and economics teacher at Nottingham High School. I'm one of the four politics teachers we have here in the school. The others, Mr Cramp, Mr Green and Mrs Gillett as well, and we all teach different parts of the course. I'm here today just to talk to you about why you might want to think about taking politics to A-level and why it is so important and why it's special as well. For centuries we've been used to having uh, what we call a divine right of kings. So we were ruled by monarchs who were there because their dads were kings or their mums were queens or whatever. And over the last 250 years we've seen a development of a democracy and the rejection of this idea of the divine right of kings. The rejection of this idea of one person is there to take all the decisions for us. And politics is all about how we as a society take decisions collectively about how we want to live together. And it explains why some societies, like Denmark for example, are comfortable, prosperous, protected and civilised, and why some are not. I'm sure you can imagine many countries in the world where you wouldn't want to live. And the answer to why they're so difficult to live in and why they have so much conflict is because very often they lack the politics or the political institutions. And politics helps to explain why some countries have these enormous religious divisions and why some don't. And it goes on to explain why we develop the institutions, uh, institutions like parliament, monarchy, constitutions, courts, that allow us to live together peacefully and to take these decisions about how we want to live. And it also goes on to explain, which sounds quite technical, the, the clash between individual freedom and the fact that we all have to live together. So for example, how do we balance my desire to drive very fast on the road with your desire to be safe on the roads? How do we balance that? How do we come to an agreement about what the right speed limit is, for example? Now, politics is current and it affects us all. So to take three very immediate examples of what we've got at the moment. Brexit has been rumbling on now for, for several years. And uh, politics helps to explain why we decided to have a referendum in the first place, why the decision of the referendum has been so difficult to put into place, and also how we as a nation are trying to reconcile two very different standpoints, those who want to remain in the EU and those who want to leave, and how we as a nation come together and decide what is best for us. Covid is another very good example and again we have two sides on this at the moment when you look at the papers or you look at what's going on in Parliament today. There is one group of MPs who believe that individual freedom, the fact that people should be free to decide for themselves about how to live their lives, is the most important thing. There is another group of MPs who believe that us coming together, taking a collective decision, deciding to go into lockdown to prevent further deaths is the best way forward. Politics is all about how you bring those two groups together and how you reconcile those differences peacefully. Now, yet another example of what's going to happen tonight in this country or during the day if you're in the US is what's going to go on the US elections. Again, we have two very, very different candidates. We've got one of them over here behind me, Mr. Trump, who I'm sure you're all familiar with who has very, very strong viewpoints on things like immigration, on things like building the wall, on things like the role of the US in the, in the world. And you have another candidate, Joe Biden, who I don't have a, a picture of behind me. He has very different viewpoints on that. He wants America to be much more part of the world. He wants to have more freedom when it comes to immigration. And he wants to uh, provide more money for the economy. Now again, America is going through an extremely difficult time trying to reconcile these two candidates who have often very opposing, very extreme different views to reconcile those two different viewpoints and decide who they want to be their president. And at the moment, the result is very uncertain, although it looks like Joe Biden could win, but watch this space, you never know. And politics tries to explain what are the institutions we put into place to help us overcome our differences, is it elections? Is it things like Parliament that provides a forum for debate? Is it things like MPs or people in Congress who represent us? How we take those important decisions and how we avoid coming to violent disagreement like we have done in the past, in past centuries, in order to settle our differences peacefully. So what does politics aid level look like? Um, well, it's divided up like any subject, it's divided up into a number of topics. We first of all, in the first year, we look at UK politics and we begin with the Constitution, which is very unusual in the UK because it's not actually written down in a single document. We then look at Parliament, Government and the Supreme Court, I'm sure which you've all heard of. 
And then in the second year, we go on to look at US politics, where we also look at the Constitution, the Congress, which is their parliament, the President and the Supreme Court. And one half of the course is all about a comparison between the two countries. How similar are our Supreme Courts? What are the differences between our Constitution? How similar are the roles of Boris and Donald? And what type of power do they have? And uh, a key example of that would be the different types of constitution. In America, as you may know, they've got one constitution that's written down in a single document. It's called a codified constitution. In the UK, we don't. We have it written down in different places. That's one key difference. Donald Trump tonight might be elected with a divided government. That might mean he might be a lame duck president. What does that mean? What impact does that have on his ability to rule the country? And finally, what about his nomination of Amy Coney Barrett? to the Supreme Court, that could well be his lasting legacy as a time of president and one of the things that people are still talking about in 30 years time. The second part of the course is when we look at ideologies. We look at conservatism, liberalism, socialism and anarchism. And I think many of you may have heard of those and might have an idea of what political label applies to you or applies to other people. But it's very interesting to see how the ideas of these ideologies developed and where they came from. As I explained earlier, we used to have this idea of the divine right of kings. And with the divine right of kings, we simply accepted there was a monarch there to rule us, who in some cases claimed to have been appointed by God to their position. But what we've seen over the last 250 years with something called the Enlightenment, where people started to question the right of kings to rule us, the changes of the Industrial Revolution, and also the changes that took place during the 19th century, we've seen that these different ideologies have developed and with them this idea of democracy and the, this radical idea that we the people should decide who rules us and who, how we should choose who rules us as well. And that change has been dramatic. It has been fairly recent in most countries over the last 250 years and it's been the basis for a lot of what we study in politics. I often get asked what my favourite topic is to, to teach. I have to say it changes all the time. Um, and part of the reason for that is because politics changes all the time. What I like most is when we are looking at a particular topic, a particular institution, and there's a particular event going on that we can really get into and look at uh, to talk about. That said, I do enjoy the political philosophy because and the constitution sections. And I enjoy those because they try to explain how people should live together and how we should make these decisions together. And they also help explain many of the decisions that we're trying to take at the moment. So I talked earlier on about, for example, the politics of COVID, where you had one group of people who were very liberal, who believed that people should be free to do what they want, and another group of people who are much more consensual, who come together and do believe that people should act together. Those are two different types of ideologies, two different approaches to the same problem. And many of those points of view are fueled by what people believe and the type of political ideology they believe in. So how do we teach the lessons in the subject? Uh, we look at a combination of theory linked to current events. What we always try to do in the lessons is look at, right, here's the theory of how the constitution's put together. Here's the theory of how parliament's put together but what's actually going on in um, PMQ's, uh, Prime Minister's Question Time together today. We use debates, we use films, we do questions, we do lots of help with exam questions. And one of the things, for example, I'm currently teaching to year 13 is the US Congress. And what we're looking at is how the US Congress is structured, how the Constitution says that it should be put together. And then what we're gonna go on and look at is how different Congress could look tomorrow in America if the Democrats have a majority in both houses. That could produce a very radically different Congress and a Congress that wants to pass very different laws. What do I enjoy teaching most about uh, in Nottingham High School? Uh, I enjoy the fact that we've got small classes. I enjoy the fact we've got inter interested students, students who are fascinated by what goes on in the world and want to try and understand it more. And I enjoy about the fact that we can have some great debates on things like uh, American politics, on the politics of COVID, on, for example, Black Lives Matters. We can look at those from an ideological point of view, so trying to understand why people believe what they do, but also from the point of view of the American or the British Constitution to try and understand that. 
To help you get more into the subject, we also have visits. So for example, we've been down to the UK Parliament where we were lucky enough to see Jeremy Corbyn and Theresa May, at the time Prime Minister and Leader of the Opposition, uh, facing off against each other, debating Brexit uh, at the time. It was fantastic to see them uh, uh, in, in place in, in Parliament. We are trying and hoping to organise a trip to Washington, uh, Philadelphia and New York, so we can go and have a look at the American institutions, Congress, uh, the White House and where the Constitution was written. And also, we uh, get as many speakers as possible. It's, it's possible to become part of what we call our PPE club. And part of their role as students is to invite, te uh, invite speakers into the school who then come and talk to the students so the students can ask questions. And we've been lucky enough to have Jacobs Rees Mogg in, we've been lucky enough to have Jeremy Paxman in, and we've had professors of politics from Nottingham University in as well. It's a great way to learn more about the subject and to find out what politicians themselves actually think and how they put their point of view across. What do students go on to do after they've taken their A-levels? Uh, we have a lot of students who go on to want to take on and study politics at university. And politics is a great course because it can be combined with so many other subjects. The classic courses are things like PPE, which are politics, philosophy and economics, which come naturally together. You can also do courses in international politics where you can have a year abroad. And they're also combined honours, politics with French, politics with economics, politics with psychology and so on and so on. Now, if you're interested after that, and I hope you are, I hope you can see how um, passionate we are about the subject. What I recommend you do is follow the events and read the news. That's the main thing if you want to study politics. Find out what's going on in the US election, find out what's happening with Brexit. It's hard to avoid the day what's going on with Covid. But look beyond the headlines and try to think about how we're taking those important decisions. How are we deciding whether or not that lockdown, to go ahead with lockdown, there's a debate in Parliament, there's going to be a vote in Parliament. Why was Donald Trump elected in 2016? What went on behind that? What were the mechanics of the election, the numbers behind the election? What groups of people were voting for him? Why are people so unhappy at the moment? Some people are unhappy that Parliament has not been consulted properly about the Covid lockdown over the past few months. Why do they feel our representatives are not being properly consulted? All of these are vital questions and they're the types of questions we'll look at in A-level politics. And if you're interested in studying it, please by all means don't hesitate to get in touch. Come and see us if you can or get in touch with the school. But also take the time to find out more. And I'd encourage you if you enjoy finding out more about these things and discovering more about it, to take up and study A-level politics. Thank you very much. I'm Sophie and I'm studying politics, history and economics. I think what I really enjoy about politics is how relevant it feels in today's world. Um, when I first started the topic, I, was, I wasn't sure, I felt like it might be quite dry, but actually it's really relevant and you really feel as though everything relates to things that are going on around you, so it's really interesting. My favourite lesson is probably one that we've just had on the US election. So we were all encouraged to uh, make predictions on what we thought was going to happen and what the outcome was going to be. And it's always really interesting coming back into school and kind of working out how far or how close you were to the actual outcome of events. I would say again, what surprised me is how, how up to date and relevant every, everything feels. Um, it really feels as though it's in touch with what's going on and I find it so interesting kind of comparing what we're learning to the real world and applying my knowledge to everything around me. Um, so as you can see, all of the facilities are really fun and really interactive and the environment is really great and it makes you want to work lots and kind of get your head down and focus as well, which is really good. Um, so we did actually have planned for this October half term to go to America, um, just running up to the election, which would have been really great obviously, but I'm sure that there'll be lots more in the future and we also go around the UK, go to Parliament, been to London which has been amazing and um, lots of other trips as well. All of the teachers are really supportive and really helpful and um, they make the learning really exciting and all of the lessons really interactive and really enjoyable. 
So the lessons really vary. Sometimes we'll um, do some reading, sometimes we'll be completing worksheets or watching videos. So no, no lesson is the same as another and each is really fun and enjoyable. The amount of homework is really manageable. Obviously uh, it is an essay based subject so there's quite a few essays but they're all, uh, we usually do plan them before and um, they're all really kind of, once you get the gist of it they're all okay. <laughs> um, I want to go to university to study politics and international relations. I would probably say just try and read around every topic that you study as much as you can because on the news and on YouTube and everywhere on, on the media there are so many things that you can look at and kind of look into each topic in more detail and that will really help and show in um, the work that you do in lesson time as well. So definitely look at the news and look online, um, particularly things that interest you so um, you know that that will reflect in your work.